What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Pio Create Halo X1. Now I'm sure a lot of you have never heard of this brand, but I'm sure you have heard of Creality. Pio Create is a brand that was founded by one of the creators of Creality, and the Halo series of 3D resin printers has been separated from Creality and are now developed and operated under Pio Create. Now they are mostly known for their dental and medical series of 3D printers, but are now supplying and developing the Halo series as well. So if you are a fan or were a fan of Creality, there's no doubt that this is going to be just as good, if not better. So let's jump right into this and let's get started. So first off, I'd like to point out that the model that they sent me is just a prototype and the actual final product will have some slight variations like maybe the color of the resin tank or build platform and software or firmware updates. Also, because this is just a prototype, some of the functionality of this printer is currently unavailable, like the ability to connect to the Creality Cloud app and control and monitor the prints directly from within the app. With that being said though, let's start with the unboxing and see how it came packaged. Now I'm sure a lot of you could probably care less about this part, but it is actually something I always take into account when receiving new products. The worst thing you want is to spend a bunch of money on a machine and it comes damaged because the company failed to package it correctly. It always reminds me of when you order something off of Amazon and they put it inside that giant box with that one piece of bubble wrap as if that's going to do anything or make a difference. This machine did actually come nicely packaged though and was completely protected with styrofoam. All of the needed parts and accessories were inside, but always look closely because some parts might be hidden within others. Now once I had this all laid out on the table and was looking at it, the first thing that I noticed about this was that it wasn't like most of the other resin printers out there where the build platform lifts from the bottom and raises up. Instead, this machine has the build platform on top and the resin tank is lowered. This allows the build platform to remain stable and prevent any shifting while it prints. The build plate is also very different. It slides right in on top and doesn't require any screws or latches to secure it in place. I was a little worried at first as it doesn't really seem secure, but because it doesn't have to move at all during printing, it wasn't a problem one bit. It also has these two quick release handles on the sides, which allow for the super easy removal of your prints once it's finished. All you have to do is twist the handles and your print will release from the build plate. That was always one of my biggest turnoffs about resin printers, as it was really annoying having to scrape off the print with a spatula and hope you don't break the print in the process. Now Pio Create has included a plastic and a metal spatula as well, just in case you need it. But during my testing, they just sat off to the side and I didn't use them at all. Looking at the rest of the machine, it does have dual linear rails and lead screws for raising and lowering the vat tank, along with easy to use quick release latches that allow for easy maintenance and cleaning. It also has a nice large pour spout to drain the resin if you aren't using the AFU. There's also a large plastic drip tray that easily slides between the latches to prevent any spills when the print is finished. This does have a large build volume, a 10.1 inch LCD screen, and 16K resolution to capture the tiniest details possible. It also features a 4 inch screen on top, which I really like as you don't have to bend over or anything to see it. Even the USB port is right on top, making it very easy to access. It does have nice cutouts on the bottom of the machine that make moving this around very simple. It isn't very heavy at all either, weighing only around 20 to 25 pounds. And on the back is where the power cord goes along with the on off button. The lid is easy to open and feels sturdy and it actually stays open and doesn't flop down with just a little bit of force. Inside of the machine, you can also see the ports for the AFU to automatically feed and recycle the resin, although that currently wasn't available, so I wasn't able to try that out. I am looking forward to using that though when it does become available soon. This also comes with the Halo Box software and even a three month subscription to Cheeto Box Pro if you prefer to use that slicing software instead. And I did take full advantage of that and instantly activated my subscription. So once I was done being amazed at the beauty and simplicity of this machine, it was time to try it out and see for myself how well this actually works. So I loaded up the test file that they supplied on the USB drive and filled the vat with resin. On the LCD screen, I just navigated to print, closed the lid, and hit start. I then watched the magic happen. The resin vat raised to the top of the build plate and began printing. This print did take around six hours to complete, but it was worth the wait. There wasn't a single issue that arose and the print turned out perfectly. This machine also wasn't very loud at all either while printing. I barely heard it running while I was sat and watched TV in the other room. 
When it was finished, I just lifted up the lid and installed a drip tray. I slid off the build plate with ease, and with a simple twist of the handles, the print easily released from the build platform. I was then able to just grab the print without having to scrape off anything. Now, I'm not sure why no one has thought of this before, but it really is amazing and saves so much time. I then just needed to carefully remove the supports. To get it all cleaned up, I did just use my wash and cure station, but I did that all off camera. Basically though, it was just washed in alcohol and then cured under a UV light. Taking a look at the print, you can see how well this came out along with all the small details in the design. I think the only problem I ran into was attempting to pour the resin back into the bottle. Since I don't have the AFU yet, I had to manually pour the resin back in, and if you don't have an extra set of hands available, it can be a little tricky. I had to hold the filter paper over the bottle so it wouldn't fall over, and then only use one hand and try to pour it back in. Well, I failed at this and spilled some onto my tablecloth. This is why I always put down some paper towels, though, just in case that happens. As you can see, though, it still managed to soak through them. Then I just wiped down the vat and build plate with alcohol, and I was ready to print again. So since the first print was such a success, I had to try printing a couple of my own designs. I'm always a little skeptical at first, as typically companies will include designs that are optimized for their own machines, and they will almost always work the first time, which can be a little misleading. So I opened up Cheetah Box Pro and loaded in my design of the Simpsons sitting on the couch, along with the design of an old man that I modeled up in Blender. I just added auto supports and deleted the tiny islands that were found as I didn't feel that it would be a problem at all. As far as the settings go, I didn't change anything like print speed or layer height. I kept them all original and sliced it. I then just saved it to the USB drive and loaded it into the machine. Now this printer is Wi-Fi compatible, so I could have loaded it directly through Wi-Fi, but I chose to use the USB instead as I feel it's just faster that way and I'm sitting right next to the printer anyways. So I refilled the vat with resin once again, closed the lid, and hit start. These pieces only took about three hours total because they weren't nearly as tall as the last one. Once it was finished, I simply twisted the handles once again to remove the print, and just like before, they popped off with ease. I then cleaned them both up and removed the supports. I did have to use some tweezers on the Simpsons one because there was some supports in between the couch and characters that I just couldn't get to with my fingers. Looking at the pieces though, I think they came out amazing. You can see all the super fine detail in both of them. For a comparison, I ran the same Simpsons print on one of my FDM printers and you can clearly see the difference that this makes. So now I'll go over my thoughts on this machine and what I think of it. So at first I was a little skeptical because the build plate doesn't seem to lock into place and seems loose, but that wasn't an issue whatsoever. Since the build plate doesn't move when printing, there's a lot less chance for it to fail from any movement. The design of this machine really is awesome. From the look of it all the way down to the subtle things like the handle on the bottom for easy carrying, I think they really did a good job of putting this together. I like that the screen and USB port is right on top so I don't have to bend over to try and read it or plug in the USB. It has a nice large build volume and 16K resolution for capturing all the details you could want in your prints. Now I was really hoping to get a chance to use the AFU in this video, but unfortunately it wasn't available. The auto feed unit though will allow for automatic feeding and recycling of the resin so you won't have to manually add more or attempt to pour it back in the bottle, possibly spilling resin all over the place like I did. It has a fast heating function that raises the resin temperature to 30 to 45 degrees in just a couple minutes which reduces viscosity and will enhance print success rate in low temperature conditions. There's also a heating module near the bottle which will also ensure even heating before the resin even enters the vat. The AFU will also automatically weigh and detect the remaining weight of resin in real time, ensuring there's enough resin for completing all your prints. Each Halo resin bottle also has an RFID tag that automatically retrieves the corresponding print perimeters from the cloud, which eliminates any manual configuration settings, which to me is just very helpful. When it comes to the resin vat, it features a new high temp release film, which extends the lifespan of it, so you won't need to change it nearly as often and it also has a nice large pour spout if you aren't using the AFU. The control screen on top is very easy to use as well. 
There's no extra buttons or features you really don't need. Sometimes simple just works. When you're ready to print, click print. If you need to go into the settings, click settings. It really is that simple and a very easy to use interface. Now, I always like to point out any problems I notice when I'm testing out certain machines. And I have to say, I really haven't found any on this. The only real hassle I had is the cleanup and that's going to happen with any resin machine out there. Because it's a liquid, you obviously need to wipe things down when you're done printing. Since the build plate is really easy to remove your prints with just a simple twist, it does come as a drawback for when you need to clean it. The resin will get inside all the cracks, making it more time consuming to clean for sure. It's not just a flat piece that you can easily wipe off with a rag like many of the other ones. Now again, this isn't really a problem as I'll take being able to easily remove the prints any day over a little extra cleanup work, but just something I wanted to point out and let you guys know. Other than that, I have to say that this machine truly did exceed my expectations. It's simple design, super high detail, flawless prints, and ease of use is why this will be my go-to resin to use for quite a while. Now, if you're looking to pick up this printer, it is available on their Kickstarter page, and by the looks of it, they have already reached their goal. I will have a link though down in the description on where you can go. And if you've never used a resin 3D printer before or are looking to get into it, this is one I would definitely recommend, mainly for the fact that it's so easy to use and the level of detail is awesome. There's no bed leveling or anything like that. Just pour in the resin, load your file, and hit print. A little cleanup after and you're done. That's it. Now if you do have any questions about this machine, feel free to leave me a comment down below and I'll try and answer them the best that I can. But that's going to be it for this video everyone and I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell and get notified of all the new videos that come out. But thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.